All right, in this video, we're going to use some limits and average velocities to find an instantaneous velocity at a certain time. And um, we got this function here. Uh, this function represents a height at some time of an object that's launched off the ground. Um, it's launched off the ground, and after one second, uh, notice I've already given you some function values. After one second, it's 11 feet in the air. After two seconds, it's 20 feet in the air, three seconds, this is 27, and so on. And notice um, it does match up with our graph. If we look at five seconds, that y value there is 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, exactly 35 feet. So the graph does work. And what I want to know, or what we need to figure out is, right here at this point, I'm just curious, how fast is that object moving right there at that instant? Um, there are other techniques we can use derivatives and stuff, we'll see that later on in the course, but for right now I want us to, to do, I guess, a long technique of finding it. How do we find that instantaneous velocity? And what we're going to do to figure that out is we're going to use some average velocities. And the average velocities we're going to use, let's just use some of these values we have here. The average velocity is nothing but finding the slope of um, a particular two particular points. So for example, we're going to go down here to 0, 0 and this point here at 535. So what we're really finding when we're doing this, yes we're finding a slope, but now we're going to call it the average velocity. So the average velocity from time 0 to time 5. should put a bracket right there. And to do this, um, our formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So y2, we'll call it uh, 35. That's the uh, function's value at 5. So y2 minus y1, that's the function's value at 0, over x2 minus x1. So over 5 minus 0. Solving this, we get 7. 35 minus 0 is 35 divided by 5 we get 7 feet per second so that's the average velocity and it makes sense to me I mean if the ball or whatever object it may be reaches a height of 35 feet in 5 seconds on average it's going 7 feet every second alright what about the average velocity from 1 second to 5 seconds let's see what that looks like all we're finding again though is the slope but now we're doing it from one second and what was its height at one second? 11 so we're roughly right about here up to here we're trying to find that slope now this slope is not as steep well let's find it we're still going to do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 well the y2 and the x2 are the same but now we got a different uh, y1 and x1. So the function's value at 1 is 11. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus that x1. 35 minus 11 is 24 over 4. Well, look, it did decrease a little bit. 6 feet per second. So it looks like the object's velocity is uh, slowing down. Well. That makes sense, too, because if you launch an object into the air, it is gradually going to slow down um, until it reaches its maximum, and then it's going to start picking back up speed as it falls back down to Earth. Let's do a couple more. Let's do the average velocity <coughs> from, well, let's skip two. Let's go ahead and go to three. The average velocity from three to five. Doing the same formula, so y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Using the chart, we have 35 minus 27, because I used the uh, y1 value. We want the function's value at 3 over x2 minus x1. And 35 minus 27, that's going to be 8 over 2. This value is 4 feet per second. And again, as we can see, it is slowing down. And I failed to draw that slope for you, but uh, that slope looks something like this. 
we're at, what do we say, um, three seconds. So at three seconds, we're right there. Notice that slope is getting less and less steep. But what we're really doing is we're trying to let this time, this time that goes by, we're always interested in, in five seconds, but we're getting closer and closer to five. So as we do that, what this line is going to start to do, for example, I'm not going to compute it, but if we were to draw a slope of a line from four seconds to five seconds, that would be that line there. And if I could zoom in, these lines start to get more and more and more, not necessarily flat, but less steep. And eventually what's going to happen is, is we're going to create a, try to do this, a tangent line. All these lines we have graphed so far are secants. Secant lines cross through two points of a graph. This tangent line that we're looking for, this slope, only touches that red dot on that curve. It might not look like it, but I'm just trying to get you to visualize. Instead of this line crossing two points, like this black one, green one, and blue one, this black one here is only touching that red dot on that curve. And if we can approximate, or if we can find that slope, that is going to be the instantaneous velocity. So to do that, we want to make our times 0, 1, 3. We want to get closer and closer and closer to 5. Now, you can plug in more values, and let's actually do that right now. Again, our function was h of t, what was it? is equal to negative t squared plus 12t. And let's find an average velocity from, let's say, something really close to 5. Let's say 4.9 to 5. That's virtually, that's a tenth of a second. You know, snap your finger. It, it, it's snapping your fingers longer than a tenth of a second, probably. But let's do it anyway. Y2 minus Y1. So to do this, um, you know, if you have your calculator, you can get your function values. So I want to do that, uh, 4.9 seconds. So Y2 is still going to be our, what was that from the last page, 35. So 35, that's the function's value at 5, minus the function's value at 4.9, see here, negative 4.9. Squared 34.79. If you plug in 4.9 into that function, divided by x2 minus x1. Let's subtract this. So 35 minus 34.79. I should know that. I shouldn't be doing that in the calculator. That's 21 cents. I'm just thinking about money. Divided by 0.1. We get 2. 0.1 feet per second. All right, let's do another average velocity. What about the average velocity from 4.99 to 5? Well, we have 35 minus 34.79. I'm getting, and I'm doing this real quick, but it's 34.9799 over 5 minus 4.99. So doing this, we have 0 0.0201 over 0 0.01, and we get 2.01 feet per second. Notice we're getting really close our time interval is really small from 4.99 seconds to 5 seconds and look at this number it's not really changing too much what does this number like it's getting real close to uh, it looks like it's getting very close to 2 feet per second and this is what we're going to call our instantaneous velocity instantaneous velocity 2 feet per second and um, no matter how close you get to 5 if we do 4.999 or 4.999999 this number more than likely is going to get really, 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 really close to 2, but it's never going to quite be exactly 2. So we're going to say our instantaneous velocity at 5 seconds is 2 feet per second. Now, what's another way can we, we can determine this? Let's find a formula. 
in our formula for average velocity, notice um, we always went to five seconds for this particular problem. Let's just use any value of t. So therefore when we do that we're going to take h of 5, that's our y2, minus y1, because our y1 value is h of t, divided by x2, which is 5, minus x1, which is t. Well, h of 5, we know is 35, minus h of t is just the function itself, and that function I'm forgetting it is negative t squared plus 12t. So negative t squared plus 12t. divided by <clears throat> 5 minus t. Taking this one step further, we have 35 plus t squared minus 12t over 5 minus t, which gives us t squared minus 12t plus 35 over, and I'm going to do a little trick down here. I'm going to pull that negative out to make the t positive and the 5 negative. Um, because what's going to happen, well, let's go ahead and look. Um, if we factor this, this will be t minus 7, t minus 5 up top. And then this negative I'm going to put up here at the top, leaving me with just a t minus 5 at the bottom. So the t minus 5s cancel. So therefore our function is now, or our formula for finding any average velocity from any time t up to 5 seconds will be the formula negative t plus 7 because I distributed the t back into the uh, or distributed the negative back into this after I canceled out the t minus 5s. So this formula right here will tell us all our average velocities. Let's see if that really works. I'm going to take this back to the front page. And all these average velocities we found at the beginning, let's see if it works. So here's our formula for average velocity. The t value we had here was 0. So take 0 and plug it into that thing. Negative 0 plus 7, look at that, 7 feet per second. Plug in 1 into this function, negative 1 plus 7. Look at that, 6 feet per second. Plug into 3, negative 3 plus 7, 4 feet per second. Notice how this formula helps us get those average velocities a lot quicker versus doing that slope formula every time. The reason why this is helpful, because now we can get really, really close to five seconds. For example, let's let t be four point and then do type in four nines. So type in uh, negative 4.9999 plus seven. That answer you get there will be 2 2.0001. We're getting closer and closer to five seconds, but notice that one number I just said again, 2.0001. Maybe I should write that down up here. I just found an average velocity from 4.9999, virtually five seconds, up to five seconds. The average velocity is 2.0001. That number is just getting smaller, but it's a limit. And that's what we're thinking about here, the idea of a limit to get this instantaneous velocity. And later on in the course, we'll actually have a much easier way of doing this, but I did want you to realize that this number does approach 2. So the instantaneous velocity at 5 seconds of that object would be 2 feet per second, which means the slope of this black line, which is tangent to that dot, meaning it only touches that one dot on that curve, the slope of that line would be 2. And we'll see that later on in the course as well. But just a, a long but um, important intro to using limits. And um, that's it for this. I hope it helped.